it is time to turn up the heat. So there was a Christmas party at church in my son's youth group. It's the preteen youth group. And they were told to dress in holiday clothes and also bring a treat, okay, a dessert. And they were all going to sample. And then I heard later that they all got to sample like three things. So it wasn't like a free for all, <laughs> which I was grateful for. But so my son and I decided on pretzels, chocolate covered pretzels with sprinkles. Um, number one, because that's what mom had in the pantry. And number two is because that's what I was like, hey, let's do this because you got to do it too. So they had, that was one specification. They had to help with it. And so that's what we did. So a couple of nights ago, we got the white chocolate. I put it in a pot, put it on uh, the stove because our microwave's not working. And so we tried the microwave, didn't work. And after, you know, you have to put the pretzels in and then smoosh them around, uh, get the white chocolate all over it. And then use, it says use a fork to get it out and put it on wax paper. Well, we didn't have wax paper. So, and the fork wasn't working. So we used little tongs and, uh, aluminum foil and it worked just fine. And so he did a little of that. I did most of it, let's be honest, but he did a little of that and then did the sprinkles and all the things. And it turned out great. They were good. We sampled some because they were amazing. And after we, you know, you have to let them dry on the foil. And so I was like, okay, I'll put the pot in the sink and I'll let it soak overnight. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know what that means. That means I didn't want to wash the pan. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> I put it in there. I put some soap in there and I was like, it just needs time to soak. Time to get just all that, that water will just get all of the the chocolate off the sides, off the bottom, it'll soak. And then in the morning I'll pour it out and it'll come out just beautiful. And I'll, you know, I'll run a little brush with a little, you know, soap over it in the morning and it'll be good. Like we'll be good to go. So, I mean, all of the, like the serving spoons, because I wanted a spoon to cover the chocolate with, I put the serving spoon in there. I put, I mean, I think the tongs, you know, everything had, white chocolate on it. And so I just put it all in that pot and put, you know, water and let it soak overnight. Okay. And really, I mean, I pulled the time to soak thing out of the hat. It's an excuse, right? Because I'd been gone all day and I, I like I said, I didn't want to clean the pan. Okay. So then I, I want to ask you this before we go back to this story. I want to ask you this. If you've ever said to yourself, I'm just going to let that dream soak for a little bit. I'm going to let it soak. I'm going to let um, the calling that I know I have, I'm going to let it just soak for a little bit. I'm going to need to have some extra time, you know, to allow that dream to just lift off the ground, just like that chocolate was going to lift off that pan, right? So back to the story. So you may have guessed it. The morning I woke up and the pot with the remnant of white chocolate had not changed, had not changed. It was as hard as a rock, as my mom would have said. It's hard as a rock. And even if I, I, I put water and it had, you know, a good 10, 11 hours to soak, to soak, I'm putting that in air quotes, um, it, it had not changed. It was as hard and dried on as last night when I put the water in the pan, okay? And, you know, I thought that soaking didn't do a thing. Like it didn't do a thing because if you know about the white chocolate, you know, the big chunks of white chocolate, the, um, what do you call it when it's, anyway, get in a package, it's like a block, you know, and they have little squares. That's what I'm trying to say. And, um, and so it, you know, it's when it gets heated, then it, you know, does its thing, it gets liquid, but then when it cools, it gets hard as a rock <laughs> and it sticks to the pan or sticks to whatever, um, that chocolate is touching. Okay. So the soaking didn't do a thing. Okay. Now, not until I put hot water in the pot, did it lift the chocolate out of it. And it was like a miracle. 
I literally turned on the hot water and put it, you know, sometimes how you wash your pan and you're just like, let's let the the force, the pressure of the water, like do as much cleaning of the pan before I get my brush in there and wash. Do you ever do that? It's kind of like a challenge. Like how much of it can it get off with just the pressure of the hot water? And so I did that and it melted away, like immediately melted off the pot. I mean, like it lifted that out of there. And so, and even the spoons, remember I had spoons, I had tongs and it like completely lifted with that hot water on it. So why did it have to be hot water and not cold water? Well, it was hard as a rock and it needed heat. It needed heat. In fact, I researched because I was like, okay, I'm just intrigued by this now. I, uh, by the way, I'm standing up for this episode because it's, it's, I'm, I'm passionate about it. It's coming in hot, no pun intended there, but it is. So I am like raring to go. So in fact, I did some research this, that morning. Okay. After I saw the hot water did, I was like, Ooh, I'm so curious about this. Like, what do the experts say about how to get chocolate melted, uh, you know, hard chocolate off of pots and pans? I mean, you're hearing this and you're like, that's a lot of information about chocolate on pans, Ren. Yep, it is. But I'm making a point, promise. Um, so I went on SeriousEats.com. I found this on SeriousEats.com and it said, don't scrub it, boil. Don't scrub it, boil. And it was for anything that it's stuck on your pans, your pots and pans that you're cooking with. And I thought that was so interesting. Don't scrub it. Don't waste all this time doing this. You turn the heat up. You turn the heat on the pan. You put water in the pan. Well, it actually said to put water in the pan that whatever was in there that's sticking and put it on the eye of the stove and actually turn the heat on that way and boil it. What I did was just turn the hot water and melted it away that way. But either way, either way, heat had to get on it. And so they their tagline for this article was don't scrub it, boil. And so you had to add the heat. You can't waste all this time scrubbing. It's not going to get you anywhere. You've got to boil. You've got to turn up the heat. You got to add the heat to lift that caked on chocolate. So let's, let's bring it all together now. So you need to add heat to your dream. You have a dream, maybe a dream of a business or the next step in your business or your ministry. And that soaking isn't doing you any favors, friend. Like it's, and I would even say this, I would even bet that the next step, you probably know what the next step is to carrying your dream out. Like you probably know what the next step is and not even necessarily your dream, maybe. And, and, and there's two different ways to look at this of what God has put in you. God puts those dreams inside of us. If we are seeking him and wanting to glorify him and making a kingdom impact, the dream he's given you that is God honoring, he, he gave it to you. So that's number one, he gave you the dream. And then number two is the soaking that you're doing and not taking the next step care with carrying the next step out with what God wants you to do. It's not doing you any favors. So we'll say, you know, well, I'm just going to soak that in, you know, I'm a, and when I say soak it in, I mean, like, you're going to give it some time. And what I really want to say is you're giving it time to procrastinate and listen. I get this. Okay. I get the fact that soaking it and making it, oh, I just, I just need some time to soak it and just let it, you know, soak in and just give it some time. And, and that's honestly is procrastination. And so when I had that pot of chocolate, I had to turn the heat up of the faucet. I had to turn the heat up. I had to turn it to hot water where the steam is rising and I had to put it in the pot. 
And here's the thing. If I had like looked at that and then I knew the research and I knew what I needed to do. If I had repeated that same cold water soaking situation, I would have gotten the same results the next day or a few hours later or two years later or 672 days later. If I had done in the same thing, the same thing, repeated the same cold water, cold water. Oh, I'm going to let it soak. I'm going to let it soak. I would have gotten the same results. And listen, again, remember 672 days? I did that. I did the same thing over and over until I turned up the heat. I'm using my chocolate story, <laughs> my soaking story to say it's time to turn up the heat, friend. It is time to turn up the heat. It's time to turn up the heat in your creative expression, your innovation, your creativity that God has blessed and given you, turning up your intensity, your enthusiasm for clients or for the transformation your clients are going to get or your customers with the earrings that you sell them, the put togetherness, the shirt with scripture on it. We are turning up the heat to achieve our specific goals. We're turning up the heat to increase our sales. We are turning up the heat to face challenges head on. I want you to experience the freedom to what God has called you to do and to get fired up about it, like fired up about what God's called you to do and then doing it. And so did God call you to it? Whatever it is for you that you're thinking of, then turn up the heat. Let's go. Let's turn up that heat. Let's unstick that white chocolate that's in the pan. No more soaking. Okay. Whatever it is, whatever God has called you to do, turn up the heat. Is it, you need more enthusiasm? Do that. Do you need to write a book? Do that. Do you need to hire a business coach? Do it. Do you need to spend some extra time knowing about how you can serve people better? Professional development, do it. If you need to start a podcast, do it. Do you need to do some really, maybe even hard mindset work? Then do it. Or is it just setting a list of goals and then the tasks to meet those goals? Then let's get to it. Let's get to work. My pastor growing up uh, used to say that there were people who would sit and they would soak and then they would sour. And what he meant by that is for the congregation that would just sit in their seats in the congregation, in the service, and, you know, Sunday after Sunday and Wednesday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and they would just sit and listen and soak up all the teaching, soak up the Sunday school teaching and the sermon and the music, but they would never take action with it. And that's what caused them to sour. And I know he had a clever way of saying it, but it would, they would sit, they would soak it in and they would sour because they didn't do anything about it. May it not be that we sit and we soak it all in and we turn sour in the process. I am here for you, friend, and I cannot wait to see where God is going to take you. Remember, I'm here to help because life's too short to just wing it. I love you, friend. See you next time.